Hello, everybody in Twitch world. Hi. Uh, we're back with Uncanny Adventures, Haunted Hamlet of Ravens Hill. And today we have our regular group of players. We have Cullen, who plays Corona, the Blood Hunter Dragonborn. Ian, who does Dustin, the uh, Genasi Barbarian. Uh, Kimmy, Dylan. Dylan plays Kimmy, the Druid and the Gnome. And Casey, who plays Bree. Brielle, the Elven Ranger. And today we've got a special player guest joining us. Today we have my buddy Scott, who is joining us as uh, the Tenku Rustler, the Rogue. So, um, so hi everybody. <laughs> Alright, so when last we played, um, the Chrono was still recovering from, uh, the, the party had left him at the Temple of Salune, where he was recovering from dying it's a long road to recovery after that and uh dustin kimmy and brie had gone back into town and had helped with some of the cleanup and things like that and things had settled down after a few days and one night they got visited by a strange ghostly bird and it drew them to the town's memorial fountain where they found one of the little girls from town leary who was looking for her pet, who she was sure had been killed. They were attacked by bloody ravens. They were able to defeat them, and they found the bird's dead body stuffed in the fountain drain. So Aaron all the bird was in fact dead. And it appears that a crazy old drifter who lives somewhere in the woods around town may be the party responsible for it. So... Crazy Bob. Crazy man. So... We're going to rewind a little bit to Krona, who uh, has been gone for a few days. Uh, he met his end at the hand of Dustin in the town cemetery. <laughs> but thanks to Bree convincing the local clergy that it would be a good idea to bring Krona back somewhat forcefully with a loud, angry voice in the temple, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, they agreed that due to his service that they would. So Krona... Last thing you remember was Dustin coming in for a final attack before the world went dark. You collapsed to the ground and everything slowly faded away. The next thing you remember, you're standing ankle deep at the edge of a lake. All right, then. You're looking around. It's dark. But there is a moon up in the sky. And at the other side of the lake, you can see it looks like the silhouettes of buildings on the horizon. And you hear a voice behind you, a very familiar voice that says, How the hell did we get here? What'd you do now? How am I supposed to know? You turn and look and you see the small squat form sitting on your shoulder of... The shadow form that develops every time you use your new abilities. Oh wait, it's a small version? Yes, it's a tiny little version sitting oh. on your shoulders. You you have the devil on your yeah. shoulder. <laughs> His little red eyes are glowing as he's looking at you and looking out at the lake. Uh hey, how'd you get so tiny, Ashura? <laughs> I'm not entirely sure, but I don't like it. I Real? think it's your. I think that's your fault too. How is it my fault? I don't know, but what is that? And he points across the lake with his tiny hand. Jeanette, am I supposed to be on the map that you're showing me, or am I not supposed to be on the map that you're showing me? What map are you on? Just, <laughs> just the base map of showing me everywhere. Oh no, you're, you're you're. There's no map. You're using your imagination on this one. Okay, that's what I just wanted to make sure of. <laughs> So he points across the way and he says, what's that? And he's pointing at the dark silhouettes in the far distance. That's a good question. I don't know. Make a perception check, Krona. Alrighty. Uh, All right. It's Finding your character sheet. Well, no, it's just, it's not finding the character sheet. It's finding the thing again, because if I'm happy at least doing that again. All right. So, um, you are looking around at this 
and you don't see until it wraps around your foot this vine-like or perhaps tentacle-like appendage reaching for your ankle. Oh, lovely. Roll me an acrobatics or an athletics check, your choice, to avoid being grabbed by it. All right, then. Oh, my God. Oh. It starts. Good start. Good start. <laughs> See. Uh, ah, so you feel this thing wrapping almost like at first a fish going by your foot and then you realize it's tightening and you're yanked up and off your feet and tipped upside down and hung from a tentacle that starts drawing you deeper out toward the edge of, out into the lake lovely what do you want to do uh can i cut the tentacle off you can try. All right. Make an attack. All right, I'll activate my thing real quick. So you run your blade across your hand at first. Yep. And it ignites with the black flames. Yep. And you swing at the tentacle? That I do. Okay. Oh. So as you swing, it arcs up so that it's farther away from you and your head goes underwater as it dunks you back down doing so and now you're uh you're underwater and you can't breathe lovely it starts to pull you further out keeping your head under the water what do you do now good question you hear a, you hear a muffled voice saying dragging well, I, you and dragging you i still have to get the thing to let go of me you do you could try to to break away from it if you can't cut it free you can try to pull away from the grapple which would be an athletics check sure screw it why not all right so uh you manage to pull and uh you get your foot loose now that you're under the water and you splash back down and come okay. to the surface when you do, you see four more of these tentacles in a dark shape that's kind of coming towards you. Oh, boy. What do you want to do? Uh, I should probably go away from the water. So do you run the other direction? Sure. All right. So you start to run away. It whips out a tentacle and tries to grab you again and pull you All off right. your feet. You can make an athletics or you can make an acrobatics. I guess I'll make a acrobatics again. All right, this time you manage to jump away from it. As you do, you hear the you hear the familiar voice of Ashur. Pick up your feet, pick up your feet, run, run. What what what's that now? And you turn as the moon it seems to have grown in the sky overhead, brighter and brighter, and you can see this form sort of turn in the water and look back toward the moon and you see it's wearing this yellow cloak and it has a hood over its head and then you wake up and sit up screaming on the altar of the temple of salune oh, surrounded think... by four acolytes and father grimble at the top of the of the table as they jump away because you're screaming out loud and then they try to calm you it's all right it's all right. You're you're fine. You're fine. You're back. You're back. It's fine. You're back. And then we'll fast forward as you rest for a few days at the temple after your harrowing experience coming back from death. So meanwhile, a few days later in town, the rest of you, it's dark. It's night. You've just deposited Leary back at her house. You're a few buildings away. There is a spectral bird sitting on top of Dustin's head and you're discussing... What just occurred? Wait, there's a bird on my head? Oh yeah, you still have a spectral yeah. bird sitting on top of your head. Oh. And it's uh, Larry's bird, Aranol, right? Probably. Yeah. And Rustler, you you have uh, followed from home this tapping, tapping of a bird. And you are now uh, in the shadows nearby witnessing this trio with a <laughs> spectral bird sitting on top of the tallest's head. All of us in our pajamas. <laughs>
And Kimmy's wearing bunny yeah. slippers. <laughs> yes. And oh, Dustin has like a piece of bread, doesn't he? Mm-hmm. Um, uh, Rustler's probably going to try to try to look all cool. Is there like a tree he can lean on? Yes, there are trees. He can <laughs> okay, find a tree like, to lean on. He's like leaning on the tree. You know, he's got his book out and he's like reading it casually, but he's like looking over and watching. <laughs> Hope we notice him. I can't believe you. Were I don't hide that myself. Little girl in trouble. And he's just like kicking her feet. So as as you say that, you all uh, one by one, except maybe Dustin, who is dealing with the bird on his head. So Kimmy yeah, and Bruce, uh, you you notice someone leaning on a tree across the way. He's this. Uh, so Scott, describe yourself to them. Okay, so. Imagine a Kenku who's maybe a little taller than normal because he forcibly doesn't keep himself hunched over. He's actually trying to look more humanoid. And he's wearing, seriously, like full butler outfit. Like if you've seen the anime Black, Black Butler, it's like that kind of That level. is a good anime. <laughs> like it's like that level of attire. And like he's supposed to be that like equivalent. Like he's fan supposed to be like dude. Sebastian. Yeah, he's that fangirl dude where he's that tall, slim guy with the long mm. limbs, you know. That's he's got that thing going. <laughs> he seems to be eyeing the girls in the party too but oh, yeah, when I say eyeing I mean the Kenku like tilts his head sideways uh -huh. <laughs> and you guys are like you don't know him that well but you are familiar with him you know that he does um, work or did work for the counselor mm. so he, he worked at the house for the counselor so the one we let die well the one that you never went to help <laughs> I mean, uh, it happens. Semantics, you know, yeah. semantics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, so you you see this Kenku no just one chilling. Knows that but us, <laughs> right? Because the other kid is dead, Rufio. God rest his soul. Yeah, no, he was an idiot. Oh, <laughs> poor Rufio. Okay, then Kimmy will go up to Rustler and say, "Hi, uh, but." Those ravens back there yours, sir? Um, wrestler opens his mouth and you hear a sleeping of a broom. Oh, okay. <laughs> and he shakes his head now. Oh. Hmm. He closes, he just, he closes his book. <laughs> you just out here hanging? Uh, he, he, he nods and he, um, he points at the, you know, the rest of the group and he points at you. Oh, uh, I'm Kimmy. Hello. I hold up my hand. Uh, yeah, he pulls out his hand, and even though Kenku's normally have like the claw bird hands, mm -hmm. he has this nice silk white glove on. Mm. Just goes down. Fancy. <laughs> the hand that has the book, he has it behind his back, more as like a being polite and less of trying to hide it. So mm. You could have seen whatever he was reading. It was it's probably some like light novel or something trivial. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Excellent. He tries to be as proper and as nice as possible to you. I, I, I sort of go through my pockets of my pajamas and I pull out like half cookies. a cookie and I go, uh, you like a cookie? Oh, you always have cookies. Tilt, tilt in my head, like jerk, tilt in my head. Um, I take one of my, uh, I just like grab it like, like this and um, just Gobble it. It's just like <laughs> it's like a bird. So, but then, then like in my shirt pocket, I have like a handkerchief. And like, that might be that might be solid. Wipe it off and then put it back in the pocket. Wow, you like cookies. It, I say back in your voice, cookies. Nice. <laughs> Kimmy just stands there, mouth wide. <laughs> I think uh, Dustin walk up and say, he'll say, "Who doesn't like cookies?" Especially Kimmy's cookies. Yes, they're so good. And then he'll extend his hand and he'll say, Hi, cookies. My name's Dustin. <laughs> uh, he, he bows. He does the proper bow thing. And then he then he points at himself and makes the broom sweeping noise. Oh, your broom. Okay. I got that. You mm. hear, um, wait, what was, what was the guy you guys didn't go help that I was working for? Uh, mm -hmm. Councilman uh, Murek. Have you guys heard his voice before? They would have heard his voice in town. Yeah. Okay, oh. you hear you hear his voice come out of my mouth, and, I, and he says, "Rustler." Oh, R rustler. Oh, okay. I think I got that. 
It sounds kind of angry. Oh. Okay. <laughs> well, I would also go up and introduce myself. I, I, I do the same greeting. Um, I, but um, after I introduce myself properly with everybody, um, I hand a rose to all the female people of the party. I just <laughs> have a flower. I give it to everyone, just not to them. Um, probably for Kimmy, since she's a gnome, I get down on one knee and give it to her. Oh, thank you. It's also 16. Oh, True. yeah. Okay. Yeah, he's, yeah, okay. He's, he ain't bends down for it because he's kind of tall. Um, he also points at the bird on, uh, on whose head again? Dustin's. Dustin's. Dustin's, yeah. And he's like, bird, why? And there are like two different voices. Mm. Oh, I don't know. It's, it's it woke me up. <laughs> and and the bird will look directly at Rustler and say, murder. I say back in the same voice, murder, and tilt my head. It tilts its head back at Rustler. I, I lean over to Bree and uh, Dustin. I say, they're communicating. <laughs> yes, I guess so. I say out loud, the, the bird was murdered. Oh, by, by yeah. a crazy old man. I look back. I look back at Kimmy and I say in her voice, "Cookie," and I put my hand out. Oh. Uh, uh, I don't know how many cookies she has hiding. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I don't have any more with me, but we could go back to my dad's house or, well, anywhere really, if we have the supplies to make cookies. I cookie, her, cookie. <laughs> you hear a deep male voice, and he goes, "That's all right." And then um, he uh, goes into his satchel and he pulls out some of his rations, which will be like bird seed essentially and uh he he offers one his wrist for this the bird on his head and two his other hand with the bird seed uh bird. the bird looks at the bird seed kind of forlornly mm -hmm. and says again murder murder I don't, and stays on dustin's head i think dustin will say i don't think ghost birds can eat uh rustler definitely tilts his head pretty harshly when he said ghost bird um and he he bleeds away the bird scene. Uh, As I, Dustin will turn to Bree and Kim and say, "Should we go look f for the old man in the morning?" Yeah, probably. I make a rooster noise. No, not yet, not yet, not yet. And we don't want to wake and anybody Trellis up. Pokes <laughs> at at dust at uh, Dustin's head, and you feel it like not like painful, but you feel like this phantom tap 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 on your head. And he looks down in your face and he goes, murder, murder. And then he flies kind of away. And then he flies back and lands on your head and taps again. Uh, I point the direction it was flying. And I say, murder. If we like, do I look, if I look in the direction he's pointing, do I see anything? Or he uh, flew? You, you see bird. more buildings of town, but you don't see anybody. I don't think the bird's going to let us go back to bed for the night. Or well, so shakes Bree, his head. Murder. <laughs> Bree, you said as long as we were in town, it'd be okay. So I mean, we can we can follow it a little bit more. As soon as Kimmy says we can follow it, it leaves Dustin's head again, and it starts <laughs> flying away again. And you hear follow, follow. Dustin grumbles, and he's like, "I just want <laughs> to sleep." <laughs> In Kim's voice, I say, follow. And then I say in the, the bird's voice, murder. And I just follow it. Okay. Kimmy will fall behind. Yeah, I guess so. All right, I'm walking so soundboard. Bree also just wants to sleep. <laughs> We've had a rough couple of days. Oh, yeah. So, Krona, you're, uh, you're sleeping at the uh, temple. Make a perception check. All righty. Ah, you you hear a, a tapping at the window over your bed. Lovely. What do you do? I look towards the window. It is closed and it is a bit fogged over from the cold night air. So you can't really see what's outside of it. Screw it, I open the window. You open the window and you find a raven's feather on the windowsill. 
Lovely. And when you look out on the ground below, you see a trail of raven's feathers leading away from the building. Interesting. What do you do? Anything? I mean, I feel like Krona would want to follow it just because Krona doesn't really know what he would be doing anyway. So, mm -hmm. And you have been at the temple for a few days, kind of just lounging about, mending. Screw it. I'm going to follow said trail. All right. So the rest of you follow Aranol. And he flies, and he keeps going to the outskirts of town, and then he keeps going, flying in a sort of southerly direction. Crap. How fast is everybody? Ooh, I think I'm 25 feet. Oh, jeez. Um, I, I can cast Long Strider if we need to go faster, though. I just have... Rustler starts using his cunning actions to keep up with it, but he realizes right. no one else is like in a hate and like moving really fast. <laughs> Just goes back awkwardly. Yeah, and when oh. it gets far enough ahead, like it will swoop back around and as it flies overhead, it, it'll say again, follow, follow, and then fly off again. Well, crap. <laughs> oh, I guess we gotta leave town, Bree. Yeah, Sorry. Just, we're in our PJs. Yeah. Come on. Can we just go back and get our stuff? Put on real clothes? Real Te shoes? Technically, you could have if you did that first. That's true. We <laughs> you hear um, fluttering. Slippers for Christ's sake, Kimmy? Oh, I can take them off and I just like put them up in my hand and I just have my bare feet and squish it in like the, the dirt. Um, I, you, you hear a rustling of like cloth in the wind, almost like when you're drying your clothes on, on string out in the air. And uh, Rustler rustles through his inventory and he pulls out a set of clothes. Hmm. It looks like nicely folded, but he only has one set of clothes. <laughs> well, I mean, at least we did specify that our PJs are like pants and t-shirts and not and nightgown. <laughs> nightgown, exactly. Bree's not the type to wear a nightgown. So the rustler is holding out some clothes to the whole group. I think Dustin's probably just fine. I'd rather wear my PJs in someone else's clothes. Yeah, Kimmy's fine too, but she's like, thank you, Mr. Rustler. You appreciate it. I just would have rather gone back first. <laughs> Uh, don't mind her. <laughs> She's very nice when you get to know her. Grumpy when I don't get to sleep. I know, I know. So you guys follow Aranol, and he fall he basically flies pretty much south, mostly following the, the southern road that leads toward the farms. Mm. Eventually you guys come to the bridge crossing the river, and he Jeez. flies across the river. And you all see uh, a shadowed form walking from the other side of the river. I draw my axe. <laughs> Kimmy <laughs> jumps into a bush. <laughs> you yeah, hear? I want to be quiet and see what it is before we do anything. I, I put my one of my talons up to my beak and I make a hooty, a uh, barn owl hoot noise. Mm. And I go into the shadows still. <laughs> all right. So, Krona, you hear a hoot sound coming from uh, ahead of you and you see a very large shadowed axe wielding form standing on the bridge <laughs> and nobody else <laughs> and, uh, you're, and all of a sudden you have this like mental image of like the moment before you died Krona immediately draws his sword so Dustin you see a, a form dry scimitar Standing maybe about 30 feet from you on the opposite side of the bridge. Dustin, in the shadows. Yeah. Dustin uh, not like shouts, but, and, you know, kind of loudly says, Who goes there? Yeah. Hail, stranger. What, why are you out at night? <laughs> Does Krona recognize this voice? It definitely sounds like that guy that killed you the other day. <laughs> <laughs> Krona is like very, like, quietly, but. Is like, 
Are you still trying to kill me? Is is that you, Crota? And then like Dustin drops his axe and he runs over and he's like, I'm so sorry, and hugs you and picks you up. Crota's like semi hiding behind his sword. <laughs> So your sword gets sort of flattened between you and Dustin as he's hugging you. Good, let's point it. And there's some tears. He's like, I'm so sorry. I feel really bad about it. So the rest of you from your hiding spots hear this tearful reunion. Okay, you, I, I, I had daggers ready to throw like they came out of my sleeves. <laughs> and then I see them hug and I put them away and I just walk <laughs> out of the bush. Yeah, I'm gonna get out of my hiding spot. Same. Does Krona now see the bird man? Uh, yes, you will see Kimmy and then Bree, and then you see this Kenku fellow walking in a in a fine suit, white gloves, just walking across the bridge. You hear your own voice as he wait, puts his hand up and goes, Oh there! <laughs> and Krona immediately hides behind Dustin. <laughs> <laughs> I say, uh, this is Rustler. He's a bird person. We've just met him. I actually don't know that much about him. And then, and then a spectral raven lands on Dustin's head and looks down at Krona and goes, Murder! Oh, yes. And we're following this ghost bird. Yeah. Is that what, is that the feathers that I saw from that thing? I mean, were, the, the, were the, they ghostly? They were real raven feathers, but this is, so this is a raven. You Possibly. see the Kenku preening himself from feathers. So, Krona, you're not sure if it was the bird or, or the Kenku that left you the feathers. <laughs> All right, then. At this point. So, the bird will fly from Dustin's head and head south down the road toward the forest. Then we will continue following, I guess. And while we're going, I pull out a badge I have prepared for Krona. And I give him a little badge of the skull on it. You died! <laughs> Yay! Welcome to the club! It's and it's I, funny. I point out the one I have on my my uh, sash as well. And yes, it is shiny. Okay, Hopefully. wrestler immediately takes interest in it. <laughs> like he gets in your personal space like looking at it. Oh, we have a I got it. You like my badges? And I pulled up my sash up near towards wrestler. I make I make the broom, the broom sweeping noise and I look excited. <laughs> oh, uh, well, um, and I, I go around through my pockets and I just like pull off a button from my pajama shirt and I draw something really quick on it and uh, I give Rustler a uh, mime badge. <laughs> Here you go. You want a badge? I. He, he gently takes it from your hand and he puts it into the satchel and you see a bunch of shiny things in there. Looks like you have badges of your own, even if they're not all badges. But close enough. So You hear, you hear a bell ding. That's, <laughs> that's a yes. Picks up his axe. The, the Aranol flew back when you opened your little pouch and landed on Dustin's shoulder and is looking and it goes, trinkets, trinkets. Oh. And then it flies, flaps, and flies away again. I, I hide my satchel. <laughs> so is Aranol still headed south? He is headed south. He is flying um, down the south road. It looks like he's uh, heading toward the woods. Oh, jeez. Well, I mean, that's where the hobo likes to hang out. Where else do we yeah. expect? Wrestler looks nervous and makes the sound of a howling wolf in the distance. There's an answering howl from the woods beyond. Oh, no, no, no. It's like quiet. It's like not <laughs> It's <wolf>. quiet. <laughs> so. So we're about to go into the woods? Yeah, you guys um, will very shortly be entering the dark forest. Oh, it, is, lovely. it is about 1.30 in the morning. Almost uh, 2. What could go wrong? The barely slept. And you barely <laughs> slept. Okay, I'm not true. <laughs> oh, well, I'm not. <laughs> um, when when Krona realizes that the like the bird like bird dude is like friendly friendly, he's like less like 
just scared of it. He, he's still, he's still, he's still nervous and a little scared of it, but he's more, but he's also more like, this guy's cool because <laughs> uh, <laughs> he likes the way he looks. Rustler, you can tell he's trying his best to look as nice and as polite as possible to everybody. He like he like is trying to get like the words out to say like nice soup, but he's still nervous. Mm. <laughs> if you haven't noticed, I made Krona to be very nervous around like everything. <laughs> um, um, if we're gonna go to the woods, um, Dustin will uh, use his uh, merge with stone ability, which allows me to cast pass without trace uh, once per day. So. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'll pass. I'll cast that so everyone like so we can get a plus ten bonus uh, for traveling here on right. stealth checks. Bunch so, of stuff that'll help us in the woods. So I will have you guys since you're gonna try to be quiet. I'll have you all roll stealth checks and add the extra ten from the pass without a trace. Wait, we need to add ten to our stealth. Yes. Yeah. Nice. Dustin is assisting right. in making sure you guys are quiet in the forest. Got an eighteen. 24. Ooh. I'll, I'll go last. Sorry, one second. He's going to roll all those nat 20s again. Uh, that's without the... T- oh my god. Well, so. I have like a 31 for... St- <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, I have an 18. I'm not even playing Damien and I'm a stealth god. Wow. 33. Not bad. All right. So Rustler is the qu- most quiet. But you guys are all very quiet as you go in the woods. And seeing that you guys are trying to be quiet, when Aaron all comes back, he he quietly says, follow. Follow. And, and, then, head. and oh. then he looks at Kimmy and he's like, cookie, and then flies away. You hear a bar now. So. I don't have any more cookies. <laughs> as you guys are entering the woods, uh, who would like to give me survival checks just to make sure Aronal's not leading you off a cliff. Because mm. Aronal uh, can fly. I can. Um, if I... The, the forest is my favored terrain. Mm-hmm. Ooh. So um, we can't get lost except by magical means nice. if you're in a party with me. Um, nice. And toy. There's a bunch of other things. I believe you... Sh- uh, I think you're going to get a Difficult terrain doesn't slow me down. Um, and you should get advantage, I think, on checks inside, like, uh, so for the survival I check. do on intelligence or wisdom based checks. Oh, survival's wisdom, so that works. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but it doesn't say how much I get. You oh, get just advantage. advantage. Sorry. I'm used to Pathfinder where it's not advantage or disadvantage, it's don't worry, I'll break. I'll break you a Pathfinder just in time to play Pathfinder again. No, <laughs> we'll, go, we'll go back and forth. It'll be all confusing, like it is in my brain. It's fine. You mean like it already is? Oh, yeah. All right, so survival. Why didn't it roll? Oh, because you turned it off. Oh yeah. Well, even with advantage, I got a thirteen. That's okay. Um, that is good enough. You, uh, as you guys head into the woods, and also, um, what light sources are you using for those that can't see in the dark? Bree can see in the dark. Um, yeah, I, I can I, see. I guess okay. I have to get a torch out, probably. Okay. I'm pretty sure the Kenku can see in the dark, but knowing that some people can't, he actually pulls out a lantern. And lantern. Okay. So there's right. a there lantern go. and a torch. All right. So. Next. You move into the forest, and Aronal tries to stay a little closer at this point because it, the trees are kind of close together and it's hard to keep track of him. Every once in a while you lose sight of him, but eventually he circles back, lands on Dustin, and then takes off again. Uh, but Bree... That's for Dustin. <laughs> Bree, you do eventually spot footprints from a humanoid. They're bare feet. One of, At first there's one bare foot and one like booted foot but eventually you find a boot and then their bare feet from there does it look like crazy bob well you do remember <laughs> when you chased him by the river he had lost his left boot at some point gotcha. and now it appears he's lost the right boot as well all right well that's who we think killed the damn bird so right. I guess we're on the right track and as you travel you do find a couple places where it looks like and Trellis has bedded down occasionally to sleep for the night or stay, 
but you don't find him there, and you see the path of these fresh footprints continue into the woods for a while. Every once in a while you hear, you know, like, wolves, you hear the sound of, like, the insects in the woods and things like that. Fabulous. And then the trees kind of start to clear, and you come on this, like, upon this, like, ravine that splits <laughs> the forest. And it's it's mm. pretty deep, and it's it's fairly wide. And you can see in the distance, in the moonlight, it looks like a small ramshackled hut sitting precariously on the edge of the ravine on the side that you all are on. And it looks like there's some kind of rope bridge that goes from the back of it up and across into a tree on the other side of the ravine. Okay. As, can I look at this tree? Is there like... If there's a rope bridge going into a tree, is it like a tree house? You can make me a perception check, but with disadvantage because it's dark. There is moonlight, but it's hard to see. And you don't okay. have dark vision. I got a 13. You do see it looks like there's some kind of structure in the branches of the tree, maybe 20 feet up, that it looks like the bridge ascends to mm. on the other side of the ravine. So the, is the hut on this side of the ravine with us, or is it also on the other side? The, there's a small hut on this side. Okay. And then there's a bridge that connects the hut to the tree on the other side. Wow. Okay. That's pretty cool. <laughs> All right. How, how sturdy does this bridge look? You'd have to get a little closer to tell. I don't do that. Um, <laughs> R- Rustler looks at all of you and does the beak talon thing and does the barn howl hoot. And mm. he'll, he'll go ahead and scout if no one stops him. Uh, Kim, Kimmy will turn into a cat with her wild shape and okay. follow after Rustler. And she just sort of like brushes against his leg as a cat. Meow. Dustin will hide behind this tree. <laughs> <laughs> like, I can't see. Rustler makes a kitten meow noise in response. Oh. All right, so. So you guys. Jeanette, you have everything. Jeez. I do what? Who? Me? You have everything for tokens. I try. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she does. All right, so you guys um, move a little closer. And this little, this little hut is kind of set. I mean, it's literally set. So part of it, now that you've gotten a little closer, like Rustler especially, as you're moving forward, you can Mm -hmm. see that it's sitting like on the, almost overhanging the ravine. Like it's been built with a couple of uh, supports dug into the ravine sidewalls. Okay. Well. All right. All right. So. All right. So, Rustler, you want to slip ahead, and the cat's going to follow you. Mm-hmm. As sneakily as I can. All right. Yes. So, do you want to... You can still use... Uh, like, if you shutter your lantern, and uh, you can oh. keep the stealths that you had before. Um, oh, I, if... I leave it behind. Okay. So, okay. Bree and then could use it. Okay. I don't need it. Am I the only one that... I think so. <laughs> no, Corona, I don't believe, has dark vision either. Okay. I do not. Wow. Oh, I, I leave it with Corona then. Okay. Yeah, because yeah, so, I'm not going to use it. I'm all right. Stick. So, Rustler and Kimmy the kitten, you guys are going to move toward this ramshackle little shack that's sitting perched on this ledge. Let's see. All right, so you can see as you get closer, it looks like there is a like a porch, that and then there's a small door set in the wall of the shack. So no windows or anything? No, there are no windows in the shack. Crap. Is there a keyhole or anything like a like a key lock on the store, or is it just a doorknob or like a rope knob? Or well, how close do you want to get to check it out? Um. Russell's probably going to be pretty confident in sneaking around at night, so he's probably going to get right up to the door. Okay, so Rustler moves across, and he crosses the porch to the door. All right, so when you do, 
I would Thank like you. you to make me a dexterity saving throw as the boards of the porch under your feet collapse and open to a pit below. All right, so you got a 14. Let's see. Well, it was a nice camping game. <laughs> <laughs> it was good to know you guys. All right, so. All right, Rustler, uh, so Kimmy, you're, you are following behind him a few feet away. He crosses the porch. You hear the boards, and you see Rustler just disappear from sight. Uh, okay. So, Rustler, mm -hmm. when you fall, um, make me another dexterity save to try to catch the edge before you completely fall into the pit and disappear. Oh, my God. All right, so you catch just at the edge of the pit, and you are hanging over... And you look down, and it disappears 15, 20 feet down into darkness. We see this happen? Make perception checks. I see this happen? You definitely do. You're close enough to see with your dark vision. Okay. I... Can I... I do not. <laughs> Rona does. Yes. Okay. I'm, I'm going to go over there in cat form, and I'm going to go out like right at the edge of the pit, and I'm going to cast Thorn Whip down at Rustler and try okay. and pull him back up. All right. Ow. Um, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> yes, this little cat. It's good. I think it's a. I think it's a saving throw, so you can fail it if you yeah, want. Yeah, you can choose to let damage. the whip just grab you. Yeah. Okay, so you're doing this cat form, just like your tail turning to a thorn or something? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I hang my tail down and it just... <laughs> Um, okay, yeah, if you if you just hang it down, I'm assuming you, somebody put a rope down, so. Okay. All right, so <laughs> you pull Rustler with your thorn whip, and you pull him yeah. back up to the edge of the porch. And as you do... Oh, no. <laughs> I am going to need everyone to roll some initiatives for me. That's uh, me. Uh, Can you figure that out by now? Crap. As Rustler and Kimmy, you hear uh, it sounds like dirt sh 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 moving. Mm -hmm. And Rustler, as you're getting pulled up, you see uh, one side of the of this hole that you dropped into starting to come apart, and something seems to be coming through the dirt wall. <laughs> Kimmy does a stock cat's like meow <laughs> as she gets a, a nat one on her initiative. Well, you know. Kimmy is distracted. It yeah, happens. you are trying to pull up. Onto your tail, whether it be a thorn whip or not. That's true. That is true. <laughs> All right, so. <laughs> I like how my token of the initiative is also a cat. You're welcome. <laughs> You're a really strong cat. Yeah, man. <laughs> so. Rustler, you can see coming through the walls what look like giant centipedes. Oh, uh -uh. nasty. Which, in terms of centipedes, giant centipedes are not that huge, like but they're big. very creepy. I was going to say, are we, are, we th are we thinking like King Kong style giant centipedes? Or? Yes, oh exactly God. those. Smaller than Kimmy. <laughs> um, a little smaller than Kimmy. Actually, oh, a little smaller. Oh my god. They'd make great pets for Kimmy is what they'd make. Nice. <laughs> oh, jeez. If Pleadle were here, he could cast Enlarge on them. And I could ride around on the centipedes. This is true. Right, <laughs> oh, don't. Please. Yeah! <laughs> yeah, we already have giant centipedes. Let's not have giant fur. <laughs> Carrying crawler size centipedes. Titan, Titan of Heats. Um, oh my god. Yikes. Um, Alright, so... Alright, so... Oh, I've seen a lot of them. Yeah, there's a bunch of them, like, starting to crawl out of the walls. There's And eventually you count uh, four of them. Why did my tracker okay. go away? Okay. Um, if, if I click one of my features, will it pop up in the roll 20? It should. It should, yeah. Okay. I just want to double check this. Um, okay. It, it didn't, but I'm, I'm looking at fancy footwork. Um, mm -hmm. Is Kim the cat within five feet of me? Uh, yes. Should be. 
Okay. All right, so ah, that's the wrong way. Let's fix that descending order. So, Corona, uh, you hear the cracking of boards up ahead where Kimmy and Rustler just went to a few seconds before. And right. you hear all this noise and you see Rustler disappear from sight for a second. And there's all this stuff going on. You're not really sure exactly what's happening. What do you want to do? Uh, let's see. I can see the centipedes at them in the distance. No, they're actually in the pit, like crawling oh, okay. out toward uh, toward uh, Rustler. And Kimmy, Kimmy would be back a little bit. So Rustler would have fallen and grabbed there. Oh, okay. Yeah. Gotcha. I see. So I guess if I heard what, like, just a bunch of ruckus going on over there, I ask what's going on. So you hear, you guys hear Corona's voice. What's going on? Um, you say Kimmy's a cat. That's helpful. <laughs> wrestlers only mimicking. So. Well, yeah, but he can he can still communicate with his mimicking voice. He can. <laughs> to he a can. degree. Exactly. To a degree. <laughs> okay. What, what, what were we so what do you want to do, Krona? Because uh, you get a meow in return at first. <laughs> is it just a regular meow, or is it a meow? It's a it's a meow meow. Okay. Can, a can, distressful meow. Got can it. Corona tell it's a distressful meow? Yes, I think <laughs> Corona knows a distressed meow. All right. <laughs> okay. I make the sound of shattering face. I don't know. <laughs> this is the closest I noise I can think of to danger <laughs> for a butler. And now you can see where the pit is on my map. Oh, okay. All right. So, what do you do, Corona? Damn. Uh, I guess Krona will go over towards the screaming cat. All right. So you move over, and you can see a uh, rustler has been pulled out of what appears to be a pit, and you see some small forms slithering up out of it. And it will take Lovely. a double move to get all the way to the pit. I guess I'll go to, like, here, because Krona doesn't exactly want to go up to the centipedes if she could play. Can he see him right now or no? No. You just okay, never mind. see a then shadowy guess, movement, yeah. I, I guess I'll, like, go, like, here behind them to try and, like, okay. help if need be. Alright, so you, now you can see these forms slithering up in this hole. Oh, lovely. Alright, Rustler, what would you want to do as you have gotten out of the pit safely, but there are centipedes crawling toward you all? Okay, um... I have allies within five feet, so I would get my sneak attack bonus. However, I didn't put it on my character sheet. All right, <laughs> so um, if you click your attack on your sheet that I put in roll 20, mm -hmm. once you, if you hit, you click on the, the weapon part at the underneath it. I've yeah. added your sneak attack in there if you get oh. it. So it automatically oh, okay. populates for you. Okay, so that, that helps. The, the closest centipede to me... Mm -hmm. um, I quickly just, as I'm unsheathing the rapier, I slice it. Okay. So a 16 will hit. So you click on rapier underneath your, where you, uh, have it there in your little box and it should populate the damage for you. Oops. Oh no. Uh, if you click in the actual chat window. Oh, it says rapier. Yeah. Yep. All right. Okay. So you do seven points of piercing damage and six points of sneak attack damage. And if you hover over it, it'll show you 2d6 for the sneak attack. Oh, yeah. So it populates. So you actually uh, cut this centipede in two as it's coming up over the top of the pit. You just oh, cleave nice. it apart and it falls back into the pit dead. All right. So anything else from Rustler? Um, I mean, he would like to move people out of the way, but he can't do that. So. Okay. Sorry. All right. So, um, go ahead. Um, I guess I make the sound of whatever kind of bird would want to eat. Oh, woodpecker. I make the sound of a woodpecker at these things to try to. Ooh. <laughs> roll, roll me an intimidate Ooh. check with that. Woodpeckers. Yeah. He's their natural enemy, Jeanette. I know. Does he get advantage? Oh, yes. <laughs> no, yeah, he, he gets advantage for being a woodpecker. So 
So these things do appear to be afraid. Uh, you actually got an 18, Scott, because it rolls uh, it rolls with and without advantage. So uh, you actually got an 18. So yeah, these uh, these things are crawling up, and then they start to crawl away from the sound of the woodpecker <laughs> toward the other like side, because they don't like that very much at all. <laughs> all right, so meanwhile, Dustin, you are standing off to the side with Bree. Krona has run off, and you hear all this noise happening at the front of the little hut. Okay, Dustin will say... I guess it's time to go swing the axe. And he'll, uh... Seriously, that's what you're gonna go with? Yep. <laughs> I love Not it. Don't bright. make fun that's of famous Dustin. Uh, I guess I have to double move. So, I, I will do that. I'll just get up there. Okay. And, yeah. I guess that's it. Because it's two move actions to get there, right? So It's no, a dash, no yeah. You'd have to dash over to get to him. Okay, then I dash. And I have my axe out. All right. So once Dustin dashes over, Bree, Dustin runs. What do you want to do? I'm going to run over as well. Ah, shit. <laughs> um, that's a single move action. I probably can't see the centipedes because they're in the wall of the pit. Yeah, they're still a little uh, out of your line of sight. I'll, I'll get in and see what's going on. Okay. So then All I right. can't do anything. Yep, so you definitely see these creepy crawlies coming up out of the pit. And kitty cat, Kimmy, what hmm. do you want to do? I'm going to use my other wild shape. And you see the, the little kitty form suddenly <laughs> grow as the little kitty becomes a panther. And what's nice. that a... Oh, and sort of just swats down at the centipedes in the in the pit. Wow, you do have tokens for everything. <laughs> <laughs> okay. it's a I, I love my twenty two to hit. Yes, so you swat down and you do make contact with the centipede crawling up towards you. Very nice. Okay. Six slashing damage. All right, six slashing damage. It is still alive, but seriously injured by that. Okay. Um, Kimmy Panther is going to... So, how big is the pit, like, around? It, it literally takes up, like, the space of where the porch was. So oh, it's okay. 10 by 10. So it's the whole thing. Yeah. Okay, then I'm going to use my panther climbing speed to climb into the pit next to the centipedes. Okay. So you're going to climb oh. in. Yep. So Kimmy is now in the pit on the, like, just climbing around. Swatting with my paw. All right. So seeing as you've now climbed into the pit... And mm -hmm. they don't they don't really want to go near this woodpecker. They're gonna swarm this panther. Alright, come on. Alright, so it. let's see. When they do. I have more AC as a panther than I did as Kimmy in her pajamas. It's fair. So Alright. So they come creeping crawling on top of you and they start biting at you, Kimmy, okay. the Panther. And the first one bites and gets a fifteen to hit. That hits, yes. The second one bites and misses, nope. and, and you, you kind of shake that one off. And the third one oh. just bites right into the back of your neck and the small of the neck where you can't get to it. So it's kind of ah. hanging on. All right. So you are going to take, let's see, that's two. Okay. So you take piercing damage, 10 points of piercing damage. And okay. then you feel this, like, Ooh, what is that? Like, it's kind of gross. Almost like they're spewing something in. Can I get a constitution saving throw from Kimmy? Ah, uh, oh, darn it. Okay. 14? 14. All right. So you're only going to take half of the poison damage that seeps Thank in. goodness. So, Kimmy, you'll take five points of poison damage as it... Just, oh, oh, that... that mm, it burns. Right. It burns. Yikes. <laughs> All right. So after they nibble at Kimmy, 
Then it is going to be Krona's turn. So, Krona, you see this panther getting chewed on by centipedes in the pit. Cool. They are close enough if you get up to the edge for you to swing down at them. Uh, well, I guess Krona will do that. So you move up and you can see these things crawling around. All right. Do the thing, and then attack. So you slice open your arm. And so, Rustler, standing next to him, you watch him just bring his blade down his arm. And it just starts to drip with blood. And then his blade starts to glow with black fire. Does any of it get on me? None of it gets on you. Okay. <laughs> but you do see this shadowy form start to sort of coalesce behind him. And it's sort of like up by his like back and it appears to be just sitting on his back like almost like riding piggyback style like, as it's like this a, tiny like little it's this tiny little shadowy form that appears on his back oh it's teddy bear oh it's like one of those teddy bear backpacks the rest of you hear a very familiar voice say stab it cut it in half this asshole again Panther Kimmy just like, oh no. <laughs> They're off. Yeah. We don't I'm, like him. I'm pretty sure a 22 hits. Uh, a 22 definitely hits the centipede. <laughs> and then that's my uh, thing right there. Your thing is going to be. Oh crap. All right, so that's going to be a lot of damage. And I believe that one's already been hurt by our friend Kimmy. Hmm. Indeed. Lovely. So that one will also die. Krona did it. Yes, Krona hey. kills a thing. The shadow makes it evil. You actually, you actually feel like a kind of a tap on your head, like almost like you know, good, like patting you, like happily. You did a good job. And then, after Krona slices it in half, Rustler, what do you want to do? Oh, we looped back around. We okay, have so, looped back around. So, um. If will let me I would like to switch spots with her oh but I don't think I can do that because she's down in the pit and I'm not in the pit and that'd be too much movement right yeah it's because uh it's 20 feet down so she's kind of on the wall with her claws mm -hmm. so yeah it's a little bit tough for you to get in there you could move around to the side of the porch and kind of go over the edge of the porch to stab at these things they've come almost to the top um, I, I will jump down into the pit with her, and I try to distract the centipedes with me as much as I can as I attack, um, that bottom left one. Okay. Oh. So yeah, you stab at them. So do you come around, like, this side to get a, get a swing at them? Uh, no, I'll just move into the pit where they're at. Right diagonal, the other way. On the other side? Yeah. All right. So there you go. All right. So, yep, you do swing, and it kind of uh, moves down the wall a little bit of the pit, so you don't get a good stab at it. And then, Thanks. do you have anything else you'd like to do? So as a cutting action, I flick the blood off of my rapier in frustration. <laughs> uh, Dustin, make a dexterity save to not get blood flicked on you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let's see. 14. All right, yeah, you, you managed to not get blood from the rapier flicked on your skin. Shame. And then yeah. it's your turn, Dustin. So can I hit this one with my axe? Am I yeah. close enough? Yeah, you can okay. swing overhand and come down and try to cleave it in I'm the I'm going to do it. I'm going to try to hit this guy. Okay. No, I guess not. I yep, don't. So you bury your axe in the side of the pit hole, and the centipede, for a second you think you did it, and then the centipede crawls around the blade of the axe Ugh. in perfect... Perfect condition. Still fine. Okay. All right. That's it. Bree, what would you like to do? Well, the only place I can get in is here, right? Yeah. You see that you could go to the other side of the porch and come, come over the little railing right. at him. God, I hate this. Yeah, it's a long, long screen thing. It's difficult sometimes. 
Uh, okay. That's I'm cool. going to use my short sword then. That definitely hits. Alrighty. Sorry. Ooh, 10 I piercing. I didn't mean to hit twice. It's all right, you got 10 piercing damage. That is, you slice down and cut its head off. The bottom part of the body wriggles for a few seconds, and then it falls into the pit and just dis disappears to the bottom as you kill it. All right. Well, that's it then. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't expecting these things to be that easy. Mm. Knocking on wood right now. Yeah, as you uh, as you say that, you hear intruders intruders and you hear a twang of a crossbow <sighs> from across the ravine sorry <laughs> and a crossbow bolt fires at brie god damn it come around the other side of the building and in sight and oh boy it thuds into the wall of the hut next to your head brie and just and you hear ha, 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 you won't get me you won't get me and you know who this is all right I do know who this is so after that is the centipede's turn what and fun. since rustler is so close and it doesn't realize that it's the same creature that made the hooting sound or the woodpecker sound, excuse me. It is going it's going to attempt to get Rustler. So it comes crawling up and attempts to bite you, Rustler. And it will get a twenty to bite you. Yeah, that does one. <laughs> Alright. So I will need a constitution save as it nibbles into you. Mmm, yummy. <laughs> cool. All right, so you take six points of piercing damage from the initial <laughs> bite, and then you feel the burn of the poison going into your system, and you take an additional three points of poison damage from this creature. Okay, that's nowhere near as bad as I thought it was going to be. <laughs> All right. It's a different campaign. After Krona, what do you want to do? As you hear, you don't see this this crossbow, but you hear the twang of the bow, uh, the bolt coming out, and you hear it thud into the wood. And Bree, you see her react to it hitting by her head. Probably try to duck a little. So what are you doing, Krona? That's a good question. Uh, well, I can't really reach the thing from where I am, and I don't exactly want to go in there. You hear, jump in the pit. Come on. I'm down there, so it's not that bad. That is true. There is a panther that Krona knows <laughs> in, the, in the pit. You, you know, there's just a bunch of dead bugs and one not dead bug. You know. Yeah. Although Krona is slightly scared of said panther, but oh well. I guess Krona will go it's down. It's a cute the panther. Pit. Don't worry. No, it's Kimmy. So, yeah. Krona, do you want to make me an acrobatics to to get into the pit safely? Sure. Oh yeah. So you just sort of leap down using one hand to guide yourself over the edge, and you land in the pit, swinging your scimitar, which hits. Wow. And. You slash into this little creature as you go down. You don't even wait. You just slash across its belly. And it looks like it's it's maybe going to hang on. And then the black fire from your blade burns through the insides. And it falls dead. And as you hit the bottom of the pit, it lands next to you, dying. Nice. And now you are 20 feet down in the pit. And you hear from, you hear from across the way, you're not going to get me. Rustler, what do you want to do? You you are surprised by this crazed voice. Mm, uh, I'm assuming I see from the rest of the party uh, some form of remembrance that like, they know this person. So 
uh, I'm going to assume that they're against them. So I am against whoever's across the ravine. So I, uh, there's no real, I have to go through the door to get across, right? Yeah, you're looking at it, you don't see an easy way to access this rope bridge, and the ravine's pretty deep and very wide here. Okay. Um, I point everyone to get into the pit. And um, I try to open the door. Is it locked? It isn't locked. Okay. Um, do I see anything upon opening the door? Um, so when you open the door, you mm -hmm. see uh, it's just a small like uh, space inside. There is um, like a, a pile of like abandoned pieces of wood, like long pieces, maybe like 15 feet long that haven't been cut. And there's about maybe six or seven of them. There's some nails, uh, tattered rope, woven branches and vines. And then you can see out the other side, the opening where the rope bridge connects. And you can see that it goes up to an, a landing on a little tree fort that's built in the cedar tree across the way. That's the crazy man yelling in the distance. <laughs> Anyways, sorry. Um, why did I not get a ranged weapon? All right. Well, I, I go in, in here and I like hug the wall so I have complete cover. But I stay in this this room. I don't go across the bridge yet. All right. So you uh, just want to make me an acrobatics just to not fall as you climb over the railing and go through the door? Yeah, sure. All right. Yep. So you just carefully go up over the railing and slide into this door with all these things. So you are inside this little hut and you kind of duck along the wall. Mm -hmm. All right. So Rustler has gone inside the little shack. Dustin, what do you want to do? Chrome is at see? the bottom. Can I see him trellis? From here, you have no line of sight on him. You, can can I, have, you can't even really see the tree fort too much because you're on the other side of the building. So, but like, if I so if I came around here, can I make a I'm, perception check? Okay. Okay, there it is. Yeah, I guess I don't see him. Yeah, you see the structure in the tree, but it's all shadowed in the dark, and the moonlight doesn't really penetrate enough for you to see where exactly he is, so you don't okay. have a line of sight to him. I'm going to um, yell, and just like at the structure itself, the across the ravine, and he's going to say, Unchalice, we're here to talk to you. Stop shooting cross bolts at us and come talk to us, and I'm going to try to intimidate him. Okay to do what I want him to do. So I can roll that. I guess I don't. All right, so as you're yelling that and telling him to come talk to you, Aronol flies in and lands on your shoulder again. Mm -hmm. And Entrellis just starts screeching from the tree fort. Mm -hmm. No, you brought them here. They, I, they, this is my safe place. My safe place, my safe place. No. And he sounds very agitated by this bird being with you. I, I say, I'll, I'll make the bird go away if you come talk to us. Aronal looks at you, pokes you on the cheek, and goes, murder! And then looks back to where Entrellis is somewhere in that tree. All right, so after Dustin is Bree. Um, I think... Uh trying to decide whether I want to take a shot at him or not. Because I can see him, right? Um, so what you can see with your dark vision, you see this this fort in the tree. Um, you see that it looks like there's not so much windows as there's these smaller sort of like arrow slit type cuts. And mm. you can just sort of make out movement behind the one in the corner by the rope bridge. He looks like he's inside probably. And using the, the walls for cover. So he's not out in view. But you might well, be able to get a shot through the arrow slit to get him. Yeah, I'm going to try. Because, I mean, he did shoot at me. Okay. Um, and if I don't actually hit him, it might be a good form of intimidation. Ooh, a 24. A 24. That is definitely going to hit him. Even through the arrow slit. 
So he will cry out in pain as you hit him. Oh, ow. My poor Entrellis. <laughs> yeah, well, he shot at me first and he killed the damn bird. It's true. So he cries out in pain as the arrow you shoot disappears through the slit and you realize it hit its mark. <laughs> All right. Do you want to stay where you are, Bree? Yeah. All right. So after you, you hear the sound of him reloading his crossbow. And then he is going to shoot again as now you have brought that damned raven to his home. And he is not happy about this at all. I don't care if he's happy or not. He gets a 19 to hit you, Bree. That hits. All right. This time he will do... Eight points of piercing damage as you are hit in the, like, upper right chest with an, a bolt from his crossbow. Wait, did you roll a d8 or just an 8? I rolled a d8. Okay, because it just says rolling 8. I'll double check. <laughs> oh, yeah, it does. Oh, yeah, I, I guess I didn't. So it's four okay. points of piercing damage. Thank goodness. <laughs> Good catch there. Yes. It's like, wait, maybe not. Maybe I just rolled eight. It, it gets maximum damage every time. No reason not to. All right. So, so he shoots you. Krona, you are at the bottom of this pit now. You're 20 feet down. Lovely. What do you want to oh, do? I go, I go after Antrellis. Yeah. Um, I'm not in the order. Oh, shoot. You disappeared. Because I changed. I switched you. Yeah, you go after yep. Antrellis. Here, I'll add you again. Good oh, call. Baby. I just know I have a four. So. I know you so. have a Yep, so Kimmy, you're actually next, and Krona's down at the bottom of the pit. Okay, um, then I am going to climb around the side and follow Wrestler into the house. Okay. Um, I have 50 feet of movement as a panther, so I'm going to... I'm going to double move across the bridge over to the treehouse as a panther, just <laughs> sprinting Ooh. towards the door. All right, so... So you move out to the rope bridge, which is a pair of ropes linked at the back of the shack, and yep. it links the tall cedar above this deep ravine. All right. So you have a climb, so I'm not going to make you roll an athletics check. That's good. <laughs> but I do need you, uh -huh. or actually I'll do this. When you get halfway across the bridge, mm -hmm. as you are running at full tilt over this bridge, uh, you hear... A ting, like a snap of a little oh. tiny clear string. And you see from the trees on the other side of the ravine, a rope drop. And it has a giant axe blade attached oh at the God. end of the rope. And it just swings down and towards you on the bridge. So I'm going to roll to hit you. Oh, no. <laughs> what, is the, what is the panther's expression in this moment? Oh, <laughs> knocking right. horror. Pieces. Right. Later, dudes. <laughs> All right. So, where did it go? There it is. How are you going? Yeah. All right. Bye. See you later. Leaving. Oh, it's my. It's 25 <laughs> to hit Kimmy. <laughs> All right. So, and then. Wow. What are we going over here? Yeah, that's a good question. There's a lot of talking in the back. All right, so it does six points of slashing damage to Kimmy. Okay. And it also runs across the ropes of the bridge and frays, uh, and frays them slightly. Yeah. As, Kimmy, you make it all the way across the bridge. Yeah, but uh, as I do, I turn back into a gnome. Oh, I no. Just, you know, I have this big cut through my pajama shirt. I'm like, oh. It's no good. It's no good at all. So little Kimmy reappears on the other side of the bridge. And you are standing on this little tiny porch in front of a door on the other side when you get there. Is that all? That's all I can do for right now. So, right. yeah. So, Krona, now you're at the bottom of the pit by yourself. <laughs> Lovely. Panther's gone. All your friends have, are doing other things. It's just you and your little shadow friend who's patting you on the head. What do we do about this now? I 
I mean, I guess you have to go up unless you can walk through ground. Yeah, I guess I, I guess I just go over, go up. So, do you want to? Would you make me an athletics check to try to climb out of the pit? Sure. Oh, okay. Yep. So you pull yourself up out of the pit next to Rustler inside of this little hut, just in time to see the axe blade swing and turn Kimmy back into Kimmy as she finishes her run across the bridge. Lovely. What else do you want to do? So that was your movement up and out. Well, considering I saw a giant axe swing at Kimmy, I don't want to go that way, I don't think. Maybe not. It's fair. So you just wait for the rest of your group to get done with whatever they're doing? I suppose so. Okay. So meanwhile then, Rustler, you are now in the in this little ramshackled hut. Corona standing next to you. What would you like okay. to do? Okay. Um Rustler was trying to be like, everybody stay safe, take cover. I'm going to be this dumb guy who's going to go in there and try to take care of everything himself. So he's a little flustered. You see his, like, his feathers are a little flustered. Um, and especially since Kimmy went over and uh, got hurt. Mm-hmm. So um, the axe, did it continue swinging? Does it look like it's coming back? Uh, it, it's Yeah, it kind of swings over and then it swings back with the momentum and then over again. Oh. Okay. Um, in for risk of the rope bridge actually completely cutting, um, is there any way I could roll to hit the rope that it's on with a throwing dagger? Sure. I would. Uh, mm-hmm. You'd have a disadvantage just because it's a kind of a hard target. It's just this little rope. But I would say, yeah, you could try to throw and sever the rope. Okay, I'm, I'm going to try that. Uh, there we go. And dagger. Watch me get like a one and a two. Oh, okay. All right. So yeah, with a twelve, you you do manage to throw it, and it hits the rope. Roll some damage. Ooh. All right. So you you hit it, and it frays the rope, and it looks like it's like starting to kind of fray and come undone. You think that it's gonna, under the weight and the pressure of it, it's gonna drop probably in a few seconds. Okay. Um, since I haven't done any moves or bonus actions or anything, I attempt to go across the bridge. Okay, when you do, just make me a strength athletics check to kind of, because it's kind of a rickety old thing. Okay. Oh, Jesus. Oh, no. Cool. <laughs> All right. Oh, uh, cool. So as you're trying to get across the bridge, um, <laughs> it's swaying from, you know, having been hit and Kimmy running across and you lose uh, your balance as you do and you start to tip off the edge of it. Make me a dexterity saving throw. To grab yeah. on as you're falling. Oh. All right. So, <laughs> Much better. So you just grab and kind of fall prone, hugging the boards of the bridge about okay. halfway across. Okay. As my bonus action, as a cunning action, I continue my move and get across. All right. Ah. So make another athletics check to finish. Hooray. All right. Oh, okay. Well. All right. Um, so, yes. Yeah, so you do manage uh, when you get kind of scramble up to your feet the second time to safely get across next to Kimmy on this little platform. If, if I even get any reactions, it will be um, trying to get like dust and splinters off of my outfit. Okay. <laughs> so after Rustler, so Dustin, what would you like to do? Aaron all is sitting on your shoulder, pecking at the side of your ear, like kind of pulls at it a little bit in the direction of the tree house. Uh, well, see, Dustin is looking at this rickety bridge and then looking at himself and looking back at this bridge. And he really doesn't think that this, his six, like, giant six foot frame is going to really be a good thing for this bridge. So he's feeling a little stuck. Um, so I don't, I don't know what he's going to do. I think out of frustration, he's going to take one of his javelins and just like hurl it. He doesn't even know where he is, but just, like, hurl it at the treehouse and hope for the best. All right, disadvantage on this. Okay, this is what we're going to go for. Uh, Oh. 17. Uh, Yeah, you hurl it blindly, and you hear a... "Ah!" Nice. As you you hit something on the other side. Okay, King Leonidas. And for (laughs) six points of piercing damage. (laughs) And from inside, uh, Kimmy and a rustler, you hear this shriek, and then you hear muttering, ah, ah, 
stupid, stupid whispers, stupid whispers. They won't get me. They won't get me. All right. And then he yells, there's more of this if you don't surrender. No. <laughs> All right. All right. There's more then. Okay. All right. Murder. <laughs> He, you actually hear it go quiet inside as, like, he realizes that you guys are on this side of the platform. Hmm. All right, so after Dustin is Bree. Yeah, well, he said he's not coming out, so I'm going to shoot him again. Poor Entrellis. I gave him an option. And then a bird flew in. Oh, yeah. Bree just puts another arrow through the arrow slit. <laughs> it's really easy for him. Damage. Holy he, crap. he curses again. He's like, I'm not standing near the window anymore. Not standing near the window anymore. <laughs> so he will... Yeah, uh, figure that out. He's going to move away from uh, the window inside. You guys hear footsteps moving. Uh, and then he... You kind of hear like this... <laughs> And it sounds to Rustler and Kimmy like uh, it's moving away, but up. Ooh. Okay. All right. So after that is uh, going to be Kimmy because she changed again and now I have to put her back in the initiative order. <laughs> yep. Sorry about that. No, that's okay. I have bad news for you. I'm going to use another wild shape. <laughs> that's okay. And I'm going to turn into an axe beak. It's a big bird. It's a big bird of the. Oh, he <laughs> really likes birds. <laughs> so, Kimmy is going to suddenly <laughs> turn to this big ostrich like terror bird looking thing. <laughs> and uh, with with its big axe like beak, just is start. Is it a large creature? <laughs> yes, it is. All right, uh -oh. there's, there's Kimmy. <laughs> oh, my goodness. You're welcome. Um, I do have all the minis. <laughs> Kimmy, Kimmy, as this axe beak is going to start whacking its its beak into the door, and I'm going to whisper as a bird. But I, I mean, you don't understand me. But I say, "Here's Kimmy." <laughs> when you start pounding into the door, you hear from inside, "Go away!" <laughs> do you want me to roll damage on the? Yes, I do. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Poor trellis. Ooh, he's Six a, slashing he's, damage. All right, so you're ripping this door apart. In fact, it, it's like you think next you can just probably bash through it. It's You just tear boards out. You don't see him inside. What you do see through the cracks is you see um, that this little uh, ramshackle building, uh, it's just kind of a mess in there. Like as you're pulling... You can mm -hmm. see there's a small shuttered lantern that gives off very little light. But inside the room, it's like, it's this crazy mess. There's, at the far wall, you can see, it looks like all these, like, strings kind of nailed into the wall. Oh and, like, God. scribbles on the wall <laughs> that you can't read just yet because it's you have to get a closer look. But it just looks like just mad scribblings and, like, notes and just everywhere. <laughs> Papers on the floor. All right, so after Kimmy is Krona. So, Krona, uh, you see this Kimmy turn into a giant bird that is now ripping apart a door on the other side of this uh, bridge. All right, buddy. And as you're, as you're watching, you see the, the axe blade swinging back across, and then it snaps off the rope and falls into the ravine. <laughs> and you just hear it kind of tumble away. And you hear from inside the, the treehouse... I just fixed that! <laughs> now it's broke again. So what do you want to do, Corona? Uh, let's see. Well. I guess I will follow them through. Alright, make me an athletics check to cross the bridge. Okay. Can I do it in acrobatics instead? Oh no, this is definitely because the, the bridge angles upward. So you oh, okay. you very carefully crawl your way across this, which you're gonna have to stay kind of on the bridge a little bit because 
Kimmy takes up a lot of room here. So okay, you get, fair you enough. get about there, right at the back end of this big giant ostrich looking bird that's just uh, ripping a door open and beaking it and just going crazy. So hmm. when you get there, nothing else happens yet. All right. <laughs> Rustler, what do you want to do? Kimmy has mostly torn this door apart. You think that you could just kind of shove it in and get inside. Okay. Um, I look back at her, not realizing what she said in Bird, and mimics the exact same thing she said in Bird to her <laughs> and opens the door. <laughs> All right. So you open the door. I will mm -hmm. reveal the room. Here's Kimmy. Here's Kimmy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so um, when you open the door, do you kind of step inside and take a look around? Um, no, I investigate for tripwires. Excellent. Make a uh, <laughs> make an investigation check. All right. Good thing I'm efficient. I already set off one trap, so it's not unreasonable to think that there's more. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In fact, you do see that uh, when you push open this door, you do see about five feet into the room small thin strands of string that don't go to any of these strings that are on the wall kind of just looking like they might be trip wires okay um i clearly pointed out to the axe beak in front of me and i make the sound of that trip wire going off before so there's this twang twang yeah I'm, and um would i be able to carefully navigate through it or would i like it would be difficult terrain for me to avoid these oh no now that you can see where they are you could step over them okay there's no sign of whoever's doing all this crazy voice that uh, i keep hearing right no do, you do hear like when you when you kind of get in the door because kimmy was making a ton of noise so once you get it open you hear what sounds like a hatch closing okay and it sounds like it's somewhere above you Oh, oh, all right. Um, how far, far up is the roof? It's about 15 feet to the roof from where you're standing. Can I use my grappling hook that sure. I have? Sure. Okay. I step back outside, and with as much room as I can have with the axe beak and uh, Crota on the bridge, uh, I, I give myself room to throw it up there. All right, now, just it, give me a dexterity just to like kind of get it hooked up on the roof. Okay. All right, yeah, so you swing it, and it flies up over the roof, and it catches hold, and you hear now, and you can tell it's outside on the roof, you hear, ah! As a bonus, as my cunning action, I dash up the rope. All right, just make me a quick athletics check to climb your okay. way up real quick. Because I'm pretty sure he'll just kick that grapple hook down. All right, yeah, you go you really quickly, just hand over hand, you get to the top of the roof, and you see this crazy old man perched. He just had finished shutting a trap door on the roof. He's perched on the roof looking at the grappling hook. And he looks at you as you come over the thing. And he's like. I say murder as I pull out my short sword. He goes. Ah! And he pulls out a mace. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that's, that's everything. For All me. right. So after wrestler. And now, across the way, Bree and Dustin, you see uh, Entrellis kind of rising on the roof. And you see Rustler has climbed up on the roof of this. They're in the branches of the tree. And Entrellis looks like he is just losing it. Like, he's completely freaked out. What does uh, Dustin want to do? Uh, he's going to say, There's more birds coming if you don't surrender yourself! And I'm gonna try. Can I intimidate? Try intimidate him again? Sure. Already hit him a couple times. So. Oh my gosh, he's so not intimidating. Holy That's tragic! Crap. More Ugh. birds! More birds! More birds! More ah! birds! Okay, I guess well, that's it. That's all you want to do? Well, is, is it an action to intimidate? Uh, it's not an. You're just yelling at him. Okay, then I yeah, then I guess I'll throw another javelin at him. <laughs> <laughs> What's the range on your javelins? Well, I don't actually know. Well, if I click it, we'll say uh, oh, yeah, 30... 30 feet. So, Is that, am so I close it's, enough? it's the second number. So it's with disadvantage. So, so it would miss. Yeah. Okay. So it, it thuds into the side of the of the wall below him. And he looks across you. He goes, stop throwing shit at me. Then you surrender. 
He points at the bird standing next to him. They found me. They found me. I told you. He looks back. (laughs) All right. So after Dustin, Bree, what do you want to do? I'm going to ask him if he's going to come down. Do you want to try to persuade him to come down? No. No? (laughs) All right. Because if he doesn't come down, I'm just going to shoot him at him again. He just looks at you and he's like, kill the bird! Kill the bird! Kill the bird! Nope. Well, You killed the bird. And he looks at you and he cocks his head and he goes, mm-hmm. He says, uh-huh. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Why'd you kill the bird? It was watching me! He yells across the ravine. Just like him! <laughs> It's him. I, it's he's, tilted sideways, my eyes on him. He's so close, like his finger almost pokes him in the eye. <laughs> what were you doing that you're so mad that they were watching you? They're coming to get me. Get, make the bird go away. Make the bird go away. So what do you do, Bree? Are you going to come down if I make the bird go away? He shrugs his shoulders. I notch an arrow. <laughs> <laughs> Do you shoot him? He does not change his mind when I notch the arrow. He just looks from you to the bird. From you to the bird. Do you shoot him? <laughs> yep. I shoot okay. him. Oh. Wow. Uh, yeah. So, um... Stand, standing as close as you are to him, Rustler, you see this kind of take him right in the center of the chest. And he, like, is, you can see blood kind of start dribbling out of his mouth. And he just looks at you and he's like, you won't get me. You won't get me. And he's having trouble staying on his feet, but he's still standing. Wow. And he just spits blood on the top of the roof. Then it's his turn. He is going to come, come at me. Come at me. He disengages <laughs> from you and runs over to this side of the roof. Oh, okay. And you see him drop over the edge. And when he does, you see like something pull tight. Like he's got a knotted rope attached at the top of his of the roof. Ooh. And he is attempting to go down the knotted rope. I mean, we'll be able to follow the trail of blood. So. so, and he is yelling, they won't get me. They won't get me. <laughs> they won't get me. He's having serious trouble breathing as if maybe he has a punctured lung. And maybe. Yeah, it's down. Oh, that's really terrible. All right. So, and then you hear, ah! And you... He hear like leaves and branches breaking and then you hear a Don't you own damn trap. You hear a thud as it sounds like he lost his grip on the rope and he landed on the ground below. Oh, okay. It's Casey's the favorite part. Yeah. Falling know. damage. Oh. And, and and he's not making any noise on the other side of of the treehouse now on the ground. Dead. Uh so uh Kimmy, what do you want to do? Um, you hear this whole commotion on the roof, and then you hear a thud out back, and you hear this. Ugh! Okay. I didn't. Oops. Uh, well, can I jump down from the treehouse onto the forest floor? It's about fifteen feet from the platform to the floor. Okay. No big. Okay. I'll so take whatever just fall damage. Make an acrobatics check to jump. Oh, okay. Uh, acrobatic. Make sure you use the bird. Could yep, you, I am. Could you use the axe beak to like slow your fall? Like, just like put it in the side <laughs> of the wall and drag down. <laughs> <laughs> yes, right. that's what I do. I... <laughs> so you Thank land you on the ground <laughs> as you slide down. And I I will run over to where Antrellis is. Alright, you come around the back of the tree and you see his form He's lying face first on the ground, his arms kind of splayed out, and you hear shallow, like, 
intake of breath and exhale, and it's like <gasps> gurgly. Oh my god. Uh, okay. Um. Oh jeez. Uh, I can't do anything for him right now. I don't think. Well, you moved. I did move. I'm trying to. I am going to drop my wild shape. Okay. And I'm going to cast cure wounds on him. I'm going to secure his arms before I do that, though. I'm going to, like, hold him down and cast cure wounds. Kimmy sits on him. Yeah. <laughs> so he's face first still, and then cast cure wounds. Is that what I'm getting? Yeah. All right. So Kimmy is going to sit on the back of Entrellis. And all right. Oh. So how many hit points does Entrellis get back? Oh. Okay, she wants to open. Never. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, he's going to get back five hit points. All right, so uh, he's like wheezing, and then you hear him start muttering, yeah, birds, birds watching, Bird, many like thing, many like thing, many like thing. What the hell's sitting on me? <laughs> Hi, uh, sir. Uh, and then it's, There's no birds here, it's okay. And, and then it is Krona's turn, as you watched Kimmy run around the other side of the building as a bird and disappear from sight. All right, then. <laughs> Little voice next to your ear goes, do you think she's making a run for it? I thought she was braver than that. Screw you, Shadow. <laughs> Cr- <laughs> Fuck you, Shadow. follows, um, what's uh, Birdman's name again? Rustler. Rustler, yeah. Rust- Krona follows Rustler. So you're gonna, are you going to go up on the roof? Because he left his grappling hook with the rope. Sure. All right, so make an athletics check to climb up onto the roof behind Rustler. Um, uh, that's not that good. No, so you you are, like, climbing, but you're having some trouble. You don't fall or anything like that, but you're just, like, halfway up the rope, sort of at the edge of the roof you kind of get to. So, Rustler, you just see, like, two red hands, claw <laughs> hands come up over the edge of the roof. He's trying to pull himself up. And you hear... You're supposed to wrap your feet and pinch the rope and then pull with your arms. We've talked about this. <laughs> and after that is Rustler's turn. Okay. Um, Rustler just saw him fall. Yep. And it looks like somebody else is trying to go up. And the only thing I can assume is it's this group that I, I just joined with. Mm-hmm. So um, I immediately go over to where um, this crazy guy went. And I see the rope. Yep, you can see I a knotted down? rope going all the way to the ground. You can climb down it. Okay. Athletics. Uh, sure, I can't use acrobatics and just like fly down all cool. Well, like. only because it's knotted. <laughs> so, but but because it's knotted, you get advantage because it, it's it's designed to to help you slide down. Okay. Cool. Excellent. Good thing it was advantage. Yes. So. Uh, <laughs> You climb down, and as you do and you're looking below you, you see Kimmy sitting on the prone form of this crazy madman. Okay. Um, I go right up to him. He's okay. prone. Yep. Uh, so I get advantage on this, and she's within five feet, so I also would have gotten advantage anyway. Um, I use a non-lethal strike with my rapier. To okay. knock him unconscious. That will hit him. Ooh. Yeah, so he's just starting to push up from the ground, still <laughs> wheezing a little bit. And all, all of a sudden, poof, and he goes, ah, poof, and just slumps on the ground. I look at Russell like, what the heck, man? <laughs> so, and that will bring you, as Krona gets to the top of the roof, uh, you guys are out of combat. So, uh, mm. Kimmy is sitting on the prone, unconscious form of Intrellis. Krona, you look over the edge of the roof and can see them down below. And Alrighty. Bree and Dustin, you can kind of see them at the base of the tree through the foliage. You can see where they are kind of in shadow behind it. Mm-hmm. Um, if, if we're if we're out of initiative, I would like to bind him in rope because I have rope. Okay, so immediately Rustler starts binding and trellises arms behind his back and ties his legs. 
He just sort of like moans unconsciously. <laughs> Not gonna get me. Uh, it's all secure and stuff. Mm-hmm. I, I, I slap him awake for Kim because apparently she was wanting to discuss something with him. All right, so you just. Yeah. So you knock him out and then slap him away. <laughs> I just wanted to scare him, you know. He, he, so he's, he's, confu- he's confused. Yeah, he's he's completely confused and freaking out. <sighs> well, well Rustler's confused too because there was a crow that was murder that sent me to you guys, and then I <laughs> see this crazy guy, and apparently you don't want him dead, so that's, he's doing the best he can. <laughs> We're doing the best, yeah. Okay. Let me go. Yeah. Let me go. You brought them to my house. They we brought did, us. We, to we didn't mean to, sir. Um, I, I apologize, Mr. Antrellis, sir. Um, do you want to try so, to calm him down, Kimmy? Yes, I do. <laughs> you can try to persuade him to calm down that you mean him no harm. Oh, my God. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I can <laughs> assist. Sure. Okay. Offer him a cookie. That'll help. I was gonna say, but I don't think I have any cookies left. Let me let me let me double check. Okay. Oh my god! I found the other half of the cookie I gave Rustler. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I offer him a cookie. I'm like, is, is it poison? Me? No, no. And I take a little bite out of it. No, see. Mm, you, yummy. Did you just eat my cookie? No, <laughs> not the whole thing. No, 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 no. It's yours. He he opens his mouth for the cookie. I just sort of toss it in. <laughs> my my assist is cleaning his mouth afterwards. <laughs> he he freezes up a little as you do it, and then I, he just watches you, and he says, "You led them here. Why? Well, my friend Leary was kind of sad because you killed her bird. He was watching um, me. Why 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 do you say that? He was with the others the other day." They were keeping an eye out for me. They sent him to find me. So I, I killed him and I put him in the water. Because you know the magic, it doesn't work in the water. And then they won't ever know that he found me. Until that you brought him here. And now they'll know. Who, the mini legged beast? The Whisperers. Hmm. They're coming back. This is all their fault. Hmm. Meanwhile, what are what are Krona and Bree doing on the other side of the bridge? Good question. Um, or, I mean, well, Bree and Dustin. Dustin I'm says, crossing the bridge to see what happened. Okay. And I'm 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 probably saying I didn't mean to kill him. <laughs> Make just make me an athletics to climb up the bridge to the other side. I'm blaming it all on lack of sleep. That's fair. Yeah, you're just super deadly when you don't get enough sleep. True. <laughs> all right, so you climb across the bridge and you get to the other side safely. And you know that they're on the ground on the other side and Krona's on the roof. Dustin, so he's gonna go in this like little shack thing. Okay. And he's gonna close the door. Well, may, no, he won't close the door, but he's gonna stand the door and he'll shout across, "I'm gonna watch this side so nothing sneaks up on us." And he's like looking at this bridge and he's really unsure if his 250 <laughs> pound body is gonna make it across this. Okay. So, so Dustin yeah. stays behind. Yeah, he's got, uh, he picks up his torch and he's got the axe like leaning against the door frame. He's just standing there with the torch looking out, being like, uh, the night is dark and full of tears. So, uh, Bree, when you get to the side, do you want to try to go inside the room, up on the roof by the rope that was left behind by Rustler, or do you want to climb down to the ground? I'm not going to go up to go down. I'm going to try to just climb down. Okay. Make me just an athletics check to climb down the tree. You're in your favorite terrain, so I think you can have advantage because you're good with trees, right? With forests in general. Hmm. <sighs> All right. Yep. So you um, climb down from, you kind of lower yourself off the porch and you, 
get down to the ground. And as you do and come around the back, you find Kimmy and Rustler interrogating Entrellis, who is finishing his cookie. How bad does he look? He looks uh, wrecked, like horrible. Like he, he probably a, a, a light wind would not knock him over for good. And he's secured. He is tied. His arms are tied behind his back and his legs are tied. And uh, Kimmy's still sort of sitting on him. But now he's sort of turned over so he can eat a cookie. Okay. Then I'll cure him for one more. Okay. Um, if, if I can, I'd like to go back and get my grapple hook and rope. All right. Do you want to climb back up on the roof and go pull it up? Does it look like it'd be easier for me to climb up if I went walked around the base of this thing and climbed up? Uh, it looks like the rope's the easiest way, but Krona is also still up on the roof. Okay. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll just take the knot of rope back up. All right. Just make an athletics with advantage. And what mm -hmm. did you get for healing him, Casey? Oh, there you go. Uh, nope, 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 nope. So uh, what's my spellcasting ability modifier? You're a ranger. So is that wisdom? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's your wisdom modifier. The modifier is a nothing. What? Oh, well. Zero. All right. So he's he's uh, looking a little bit better. Some of the wounds heal up. And he looks at you and he goes, thank you. And I killed the bird. Why? It was following me. They brought it Why? with them. Do you care that it was following you? Because the ones in the yellow robes brought them to town. The oh. ones in the yellow robes brought the birds to town? They're back again. Do I know what he's talking about? Uh, you're... No. I've lived here for 200 years and I don't know what he's talking about. Yep, you, this is new. Yikes. Uh, does Rustler know anything about yellow robes or whatever? Uh, no, like I this is, it. yeah, this is, the only yellow robe thing that, that you know, I think, is Kimmy no, has, saw something recently. Yeah. We saw a yellow robe when we were in the cemetery. Yeah. Oh, no. He says, um, they left it behind to spy on me. I knew the bird saw me. I know those cultists that they come back. I watched it, I grabbed it, and then I drowned it in the fountain. It scratched me up real good, took my ring, and tore up my arm. But it serves you right. Well, it's possessed or something. Hungry for blood! It near snapped off my finger. But I did it in, and now it can't follow me anymore until you brought it here. I don't know why. <laughs> I'm I'm sorry, Mr. Antrellis. I didn't realize. You should be. And he wave he like he like kind of moves his hands and he can't get them, so he like shakes his shoulder and you see this little moppet doll that's like made of like burlap and cloth shake out of a pocket a little bit and flap and he's like, We've been keeping an eye out for them for years and you just led them to us. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what to say that. Want uh, to rationalize with the crazy person. I will take Antrellis's ring that we have and I will give it back to him. No! I will slip it back on his finger. No. Here you go. He kind of no. watches over his shoulder and you put it on his finger and he has another ring like on, his, on the opposite hand. Oh. You think the one that you put back might even be his wedding ring with the signet in it? <laughs> and he Poor says, guy. he says, you know, they took her, the multi-legged horror, they took her and they put the worms in her. They wanted to put the worms in me, too. But I was like, no, 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 no. Oh, God almighty. But they took her. Wait, what organization? What? The Whisper <laughs> Cult. They're back. They're here. And you, they want you, too. You messed up their plans. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Somebody in particular? Mm-hmm. <laughs> He just points at all of you. He doesn't point at at, at a rustler. Mm -hmm. He thinks rustlers in. <laughs> he seems to think rustlers in on the cult. Well, rustler at this point, seeing getting this story, uh, actually is starting to feel sorry for this crazy man. And he actually, um, hopefully, he doesn't use up his medicine, his healer's kit. But mm -hmm. he actually tries to like like clean him up a little bit, you know. Okay. While, while still bound, of course, in the silk rope that I mm. had. 
So he he says, as you do this, he's eyeing you. And he's like kind of muttering. And he's like, I thought they were gone all these years after they took her and she died. I thought they were gone. But no, they're back. They're back. And I've been tracking them. And I know their movements. And I know. I know why they did this. I know why they let this town be built. I know. I know. I know it all. And they're coming back for me because I know too much. And then he tries to, like, slam his head against anything nearby, like if there's a rock or something. And he says, stop the voices, stop the voices. Can I wrestler try to calm him down by, like, like a bird chirping lullaby kind of thing going? I don't know. Sure, you can roll me a charisma check to try to calm him. Okay. Oh. All right, so he he does kind of seem to swoon to it a little bit, and he seems to calm. And he says, my notes, my notes are upstairs. All of my notes. I've been tracking them. I know. I know. I mean, I don't know all of it, but I know. <laughs> um, I don't think I've heard Kim say thank you yet. Have I? Oh, wait, what? I don't think I've heard you say thank you yet. I, I say in a tiny girl voice, thank you. And um, I, I go up the rope to get back inside and do all that. Look, look at this journal, maybe. All right. Mm. So, yeah. So, if you go back up and inside, mm -hmm. uh, you see that the room is like it kind of bewildering. There is an array of scrawled notes, there's a bunch of little map fragments laying about. There's some strange equations stretched into one of the walls. And then there's all these little, like, nails in the walls, in the beams of the ceiling, all around. And there's, like, string tied around the room to everything. Almost like, and it's, and where he could, he has different colored string. Like, he's trying to trace a pattern of something that's going on. Mm -hmm. um, and you see, like, notes about, like, uh, dead wife witchcraft um you see like a part like a little piece of like a cut piece of robe with blood on it the robe itself is yellow and there's blood on the robe mm. so while you're looking at this you can make me either an arcana or an investigation check uh considering my arcana is a minus one i'm gonna go with investigation <laughs> oh oh well yeah. Try. yeah so you're you're not really sure what all of this means you do see um in a couple places like you see some notes about um the castle raven's roost castle and mm. or raven's crest castle um and like little scrawled notes about activity keeping an eye on it beware the birds okay um i, I guess i'll keep those separate but i pretty much hoard all the papers here that i can okay um problem for, for handwriting purposes uh he likes to hand, copy people's all right um, how they write and um the, those robes he'll take those bloody yellow robes as well okay you also find up here um a magnifying glass a steel mirror an hourglass and a merchant scale uh i look at my own steel mirror and look at the uh, the one that's here is it better uh no yours is much better okay i leave it and <laughs> And I, I leave everything else here, okay. and I head back down and try to show everyone the papers. Okay. So, um, you come back down. So, you see all this collection that Rustler has brought down. And, Corona, do you come down from the roof? Sure. All right. Make me, just make me an athletics to climb down from the roof, Corona. Oh, okay. Well, you're using... Yeah, you have advantage. You're using the knotted rope to get back down. Yeah, you're fine. Okay. All right. So... Anybody who wants to look at these things that Rustler brought down with him can do either an investigation or an arcana check on these items. Okay. Mm. I don't have very good of either. Kimmy will try her best. I was debating between Swashbuckler and Investigator. Probably should one with Investigator. Hmm. All right, let's see. Kimmy tries her best to piece things together. She does, and she'll see here. 
Can I try both? Uh, no, just one or the other. <laughs> Darn it. I know, it's terrible. It's the same bonus for both for me, so. Right. Me too. I was just hoping for a second chance. <laughs> <laughs> so. So, Kimmy, you, you don't uh, understand it completely, but a lot of his notes sort of uh, talk about, like, aberrations and mm. things like that and describe, like, um, tentacled creatures and um, worms that eat brains and uh. things of that nature. So. Yikes. So as you guys are looking through this stuff and Entrellis is sitting with his hands and his legs tied, uh, you see um, he kind of starts to shake his head back and forth. And he's like, and his left eye kind of twitches a little bit. And then it sort of um, s starts to sink into the skull a little bit. Uh, I mean, I mean, his brain, huh? No. I, I immediately draw my rapier and point it at him. Okay. Can I go up to Antrellis and cast Lesser Restoration on him? You can. Okay. Uh, you touch a creature and it can end either one disease or one condition afflicting it. So. Okay. You, you touch him. And um, when you do, he still is twitching. And then you see, like, down the side of his neck, it looks like something under his skin bulges down and goes down into the chest area. Yep. Uh, I, I make the sound of wiggling worms and I like put the rapier to his chest but I don't actually poke through. Yikes. So and I, and I'm ready an attack in case like he just turns into a horde of worms or something. Alright, Kimmy <laughs> and Rustler, since you're right there, you guys can both make me uh perception or medicine checks, one or the other. Okay. As he starts to kind of convulse a little where he's sitting. They got to his brain. All right. So, Rustler, uh, you definitely think that there is something alive inside of him. And as you are watching closely, uh, his chest starts to kind of bulge in Ugh. the center. Mm. <laughs> hello, hello, alien. Yeah, this is creepy. Uh, let's see here. See, I have a lot of items. Let's see if I can use any of them. Mm. Mm. No, I, I just, I, I'm like defensive rapier stance, I guess, ready to attack whatever's going to come out of him. Because I'm going to assume he's. he's All right. So as you're ready, uh, Bree and Krona, what are you doing as now you notice uh, him, like, he's starting to convulse, and you see, like, he's just starting to drool, and there's a little blood in it coming out of his mouth. Yes, I'll pull out my short swords. And Krona. Krona pulls out his scimitar and is kind of backing up a step like, ugh. And Krona's like, nope, nope, nope. <laughs> All right, so as you do, you see the chest bulge and then bulge again. And then in an erupting spray of gore from the torso, so like his chest just bursts, you see him sort of like flopping back as this happens. And this small shellless crab-like creature with many legs Yikes. and a fanged maw dripping with greenish venom emerges from his chest in a burst. Its tiny winking eyes cover its body and limbs, so it's got little blinky eyes all over its every appendage, everywhere, this little eyes blinking. Oh, lovely. But most horrifying of all is within a distended, pulsating, translucent rubine sack on the creature's back is a glistening human brain. <laughs> <laughs> and I think we'll stop there. <laughs> Why don't let us use our ready to actions. We can use them next time. <laughs> oh man! Once, once an attack happens, there's point of no return there. Pretty much. So, uh, <laughs> so we will stop there as this creature emerges from Entrellis in this moment, and he uh, appears to flop back and like gurgle his last gurgle. 
Hmm. Four intros. Creeptastic. And you see this this wonderful little creature. Oh. oh. Crawl its way out. Ugh. Uh, I'm glad I'm on the other side of the bridge. Thanks for putting that in your <laughs> brain before I go to dinner. I'm sorry. Mm. Well, theater of the mind is much worse. I don't know how, but I pictured it worse. <laughs> um, so I didn't picture it quite as bad. I mean, it was it was different, but it was probably just as bad. Oh yeah, I I, I hate like chest bulge things. Those things are creepy. But now I have two awful images in my head: the one I created and the one you gave me. <laughs> Hooray! <laughs> That's what I'm here for. Well. <laughs> so, uh, so we will be back in two weeks. Um, and if Scott wants to come back, he is more than welcome to come back as Rustler. Or Rustler may just decide this is too much and take off and well, leave the situation. I mean, he might. He might. He like, might. If, if you got to pull him on autopilot, he'll probably flee. <laughs> we, will, we will find out in our, in our next part of the adventure. But until then, the crazy old man has died from the many-legged thing as it emerges from his chest cavity. I feel so bad. Not really. I do. <laughs> I've probably had many, many encounters with him in the forest and have thought he's been an, a nutter for years. He drives me crazy. <laughs> he is a bit of a nutter. But he means well. Or he did. Yeah. So, <laughs> so yes, indeed. He, he has collapsed and died. And you guys are now faced with this many-legged, many-eyed abomination of a creature. Yikes. And all of the eyes... <laughs> Look at all of you, and you see your reflections in in the uh, eyeballs as it's watching you. <laughs> yeah. Except for Not Dustin, me. who is sitting on the other side, watching the door <laughs> intently for anything bad to happen. That's right. No one's getting through this door. No <laughs> <way>. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. So, all right then. So uh, we're done. So I guess I'll do. Uh, if anybody wants to do anything as far as um, plugs, uh, I know that Scott, you have stuff you do online. Okay, uh, I'm not very good with these, but I have my own channel on Twitch. It's uh, Scotty underscore Hood with the O's being zeros, no caps. And I run a Adventures in Tranquil's Sea campaign, which is uh, Portnar and Zaru, a very aquatic-themed campaign. And I also run, or that's Saturdays at 7 Eastern Standard. And then Fridays on Eastern Standard Time, I run a new campaign setting called Retroverse, which is supposed to be like very 90s, 80s action stuff like Power Rangers and Darkwing Duck and, you know, all that cool stuff. Awesome. It's really good. I watch both of them when I can. They're very good. Darkwing Duck. <laughs> you should watch it, Casey. And then it's Dylan. Dylan does some online yes. fun. Uh, this Saturday at 6.30 on Power Score RPG, um, I'm going to be doing dinosaur racing as Pleetal Ploplina, my Triton Sorceress. Uh, I do believe Jeanette and Scott will be there. Oh, so. yeah. Oh, yeah. I should have mentioned that. <laughs> yep. Rain, Rain the Moon Elf will be back from her, her week-long recuperation and ready to dinosaur then, race. Then, 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 next Thursday, I will be on Off the Table, a DM uh, advice show talking about playing and DMing for evil characters. Mm -hmm. So that should be really fun. And then uh, next weekend, the weekend after the one coming up, uh, the first, second, and third of May or June, excuse me, uh, on Power Square RPG, I should be on the post stream of Many Eyes talk show. Very nice to talk about the new D and D adventure. So that should be fun too. That is awesome, and I will be back with these guys in two weeks here at four thirty Eastern time, uh, again on my channel here, Je Briggs Seven Nine on Twitch. Um, also, I'm going to be on Off the Table this Thursday night, and we're supposed to talk about uh, DMs and organizing and how you keep everything kind of in order and organized for your game, which sometimes I'm great at and sometimes I'm not, but you know, <laughs> I have my methods. So yeah, I will be on, it's uh, 8 o'clock Eastern time uh, on Off the Table's Twitch channel. So that's what I'm doing this week. All right. So if no one else, do, do any of you guys doing anything fun? Nope. <laughs> oh, okay. You'll be back here in two weeks. That's amazing. I'll be here in two oh, weeks. Yeah. More <laughs> dust than standing in the door. Yes. <laughs> will, will will this is this is the ending of the episode? Will Dustin come across the bridge or won't he? Find out next time <laughs> on Uncanny Adventures 
Probably not. The Haunted Hamlet of Ravens Hill. All right, guys. We're going by. Bye. <laughs>